My name is Audra Carmini, and my hometown is Portland, Oregon. I've lived there my whole life, pretty much. Yoga was something that began to interest me when I was a young teenager. And I asked my mom when, I think for my 13th or 14th birthday for yoga lessons, we lived in this sort of hip neighborhood in Portland that was a little bit alternative and I had seen signs for yoga. So I knew that it was this thing that existed and I didn't really understand it. And she purchased for me for my birthday, not lessons, but just this foam, this blue, I'll never forget it, foam mat um, that wasn't really a yoga mat, but it was literally like styrofoam or something like this. And then a copy of the yoga journal from sometime in the 90s, maybe 1993, wrapped in a ribbon. And I used that copy of the yoga journal in my funny little yoga mat just by myself. Honestly, I came from a family of athletes. My dad was a professional rugby player in New Zealand. That's how he and my mom met when he was touring. And even my great grandfather was the manager of the All Blacks. And so we were very competitive as a family. So I'm not exactly sure why I got it in my head to start to follow this calling towards yoga, but I did. My really dear friend and I, she's another yoga anytime teacher, Jessica Gare. Uh, we opened up a studio in Portland. It's called Love Hive Yoga. And we thought of this name really purposefully because the hive, right, is this idea about community and that we all come together. And through the fruit of our labors and our being together and our being really uh, wholehearted, showing up openly with our whole selves as much as we can when we show up to the mat that through that process we will be able to make this like sweet honey nectar that can sustain us through the times that are really difficult. To be a leader in a community feels natural because I don't think that I necessarily see myself as the leader, I just see myself as part of the community. And I think that's what makes it special is that there's not um, sort of a guru mentality it, at Love Hive Yoga. Like the, we say our catchphrase is, the queen bee is love. There is no queen bee except for love. On this path um, of being a teacher, especially when I was a new teacher, I made the mistake of um, excitement <laughs> leading towards an overbooking and an overextension of myself. And at one point I was teaching like, 15, 19 classes a week if I was subbing, which is great for getting experience, but a really beautiful way to burn yourself out and to let go of your personal practice. And so for me personally as a teacher, rooting yourself in your personal practice is like the most important thing. It's part of the practice of teaching is being okay with yourself as you wake up every single day. It's hard, hard work. I've had a couple of moments in my life where um, the darkness has sort of like threatened to come down and to shut things down. Um, and like anything, for me at that time, I, I had a choice both times. Um, and one in particular that I was thinking it was when I was a new yoga teacher. And it wasn't going very well. I was sort of like muddling my way through it. And I remember I was washing my teacup after teaching and I, was, I set my teacup down and I was like, I, screw this. I don't wanna be a yoga teacher. I'm just gonna be me. I'm just gonna show up as me and see what happens. And lo and behold, <laughs> the secret sauce was made. Suddenly my classes started to feel good. Like I felt great after teaching. I um, was able to fill them and that people started to come and show up. Yoga and motherhood is hilarious. I, my practice <laughs> right now is in my living room. I live in the tiniest house um, that four people have possibly ever lived in. And so it's my mat, which is up against my bedroom door, which my bedroom door opens up into the living room. and so. 
And then through my bedroom door is the bathroom. And so it's just this kind of big circle of life that's happening all the time. So many times when I'm practicing, I am also answering questions about um, yoga, not yoga, about Legos and where something might go on a Lego or can you help me or can you do this? It's not, um, many times it is not an uninterrupted practice and that's become totally okay with me. It's just how it is. It's how we move in my household. Everyone's free to talk. No one can be like, shh, be quiet. Mom's practicing yoga. That's just not how things turned out for me. Um, so it's this practice of not being attached to what it will look like in the end. And also my kids have become really, really good at yoga photography. And I have lots of pictures of myself with Legos and like a yoga pose, which is pretty awesome. My daughter, she's 14, she says, mom, you're always saying things like, <laughs> just relax into it, Veda. You gotta let the you just arise. Don't try and put something else on. You know, like I'm always giving her sort of um, yoga advice is what she would call it. And that, I don't know, I think, I think that's really a wonderful way to be a mom. How do I know my practice is working? Is if I feel really rooted inside of myself. And I think that part of that process is beginning to know when you don't, you're not inside of yourself and like fully present, when you can start to name those moments and recognize those moments. Even if you are kind of like all out there and you're like, wait a minute, like I'm really spread out right now, then the drawing in kind of happens naturally. And that's, I feel like when I know my practice is working.